Okay, so we previously talked about kind of two types of bonding, ionic bonding and covalent bonding. But there are multiple types of covalent bonds. So even though we're just sharing electrons pretty equally between atoms, uh, there's like the origin of where those electrons come from could be slightly different. Um, so we'll kind of go through different classes. So the first one I want you to talk about is just, you know, this is the classic example that you've been doing in organic chemistry. We're just kind of like you know, two electron, two center bonds, where they kind of come from the same place, right? So we have A with one electron, B with one electron, and then together they form that bond. And then so the classic example that you've probably been looking, thinking about would be for, let's say, alkanes. So, right. So if you want to count valence electrons, carbon has four valence electrons. So uh, there's one sharing one, or donating one to this bond. So there's one valence electron here, one valence electron here. Together they form that bond. OK, the second type that you've probably also seen before um, so these are called like Lewis acid, Lewis base, base. These are also called donor acceptor bonds. And also data bonding. And this is when one atom actually gives a lone pair. So this is my Lewis base. Okay, sorry, I'll make the B the Lewis base. The Lewis base goes into our empty orbital of the Lewis acid, and then so that goes here, and then together that forms the bond. So even though the final result is that we still have two centers and two electrons, the initial formation of that is from our Lewis base, Lewis acid interaction, which you've seen before. Um, and then so our, I guess, one example, suppose we take ammonia, our Lewis base, and then we take, let's say, borane. Lewis acid has that empty p orbital, right? And that goes to ammonia borane. So let's see. If you want to think about it, I guess if we're doing electron counting, right? So we know that boron should have three valence electrons, one, two, three, and then hydrogen has three, one valence electron each. So these bonds are all kind of our original normal two center, two electron covalent bonds. And then same for nitrogen, right? We have our normal two center, two electron bonds here, but then nitrogen starts off with five valence electrons here. So we've got to be doing, we could call this a data of interaction. I'll admit that in the final molecule, you can't really tell the difference between any of these bonds, but this is a good kind of accounting method for you to realize that, of course, this has got to be this type of interaction. OK, so this is data of interaction. It's all from counting your valence electrons. OK, so the third type is called three centered two electron bonds. Three centered two electron bonding electron deficient bonding. And then so this happens when we can have, let me see my picture. Um, so we have three centers. We have A, we have B, and then we have C. And then so in this situation is three center two electrons. So we have here, two electrons shared over all three of those centers. So typically, what we've seen before is that each bond has two electrons. This is not the case in three center two electron bonding. We technically, you can draw a picture out as like three diff two different bonds, but we only have two electrons over those two different bonds. And here's our example of when that happens. OK. Let's think about diborane. So B2H6, right? So this, if it were analogous to C2H6, let me put a little sidebar. So C2H6 is ethane, which you've seen before. This has 16 valence electrons. 16 valence electrons. 
So when you draw ethane, I'm not drawing stereochemistry, we could have our different, our di oh, actually, hmm, I think I messed it up. This is 14 valence electrons. That's, that's where everything is going wrong. Four from each carbon, so eight plus six is 14. So then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 valence electrons in our, so these are all normal kind of two center two electron bonding. That's fine. In contrast, if we did our B2H6, we only have three times two plus six is 12 valence electrons. So there's no way to accommodate that. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first draw out two separate borane molecules, BH3. And then we have our second borane. So of course borane, boron doesn't have a complete octet because it has that empty p orbital. So one way you could think about what's happening is that we have this empty p orbital here. And we have our two electrons within this hydrogen boron bond. So what it can do is this two electron uh, bond can donate electron density into the empty p orbital. And then this boron bond can donate into here. So then this ends up giving us B2H6. It's, we have these bridging hydrogens. So if you have bridging hydrides or methyls, sometimes aryls, phenyl for example, then typically you have uh, electron deficient bonding, three center two electron bonds. And then one way we can do this, again, we can do that kind of electron counting. So what we know is that boron has three valence electrons. So we'll put one here, we'll put one here, and we'll put, we'll put one here for now. Boron also has three electrons, so two, three. We know hydrogen has one electron each. Okay, so voila. So we know that these terminal BH bonds, they both have two electrons, one from hydrogen, one from boron, so that's fine. These are normal bonds, two center two electrons. Two center two electron bonding. But here in this kind of square of four things, we only have four electrons for four bonds. So we gotta have electron deficient bonding. So what we can do is we can then say that there's one three center two electron bond here. So these two electrons, one, two. And then these one, two can then go into this. So these two bonds are equivalent. So we'll call both of these bonds three center two electron bonds, and then both of these as well, three center two electron bonds. So that's how we kind of identify different types of bonding within a molecule. So you have to do some electron counting, or remember the shorthand. Okay, so lastly, there's a fourth type which you've actually seen already on your problem set. Number four, now this will be three centered four electron bonding Um, so, okay, uh, I'll explain what this is. This is um, something different than just having two two electron, two center bonding. So, this is what happens when <clears throat> we kind of have, let's say, A, B, and C, and instead of having one electron from sharing this way, right, this is a normal two center two, two electron bond, we're not doing it that way. What we're having is instead two electrons from A, two electrons from C, and they're going into the same orbital. So that's kind of the critical part of three center two, four electron bonding. And so you've actually seen one example of this, which is I3 minus. I3 minus. So we talked about how iodide was coming in into that anti-bonding sigma star, 
But you could also think about it as, let's say, let's say here's my iodine p orbital. And then we could have iodide here, iodide here. And then so then they both donate this way. Um, so this is similar to basically in your MO diagram, what we do is we end up having like a nodal plane down the middle, but then we have the two electrons coming in this way. So this is kind of somewhat less common, but they're always going to be, the key part to remember is that it's, they're, they're sharing the same orbital. Okay, so those are the four types. We'll do some practice problems on Wednesday uh, to assigning the, these different types of molecules. I will say the practice problems I'm going to have are primarily going to be types one through three. I might do like a trick example with this fourth type. Okay.